So today we have another teardown and this is going to be this electroluminescent strip, electroluminescent panel and electroluminescent wire. And it's battery operated driver. So this is the green strip, there are two wires going to it and there's the driver. It has a button, you can turn it off, on, slow blinking and quick blinking. This is the wire. I have peeled one piece of it here and strangely it is not pink, it is blue inside and there is some kind of uh, pinkish sleeve over it. It's like the vacuum fluorescent display color. A bluish greenish cyan color. And there is a sleeve over it to turn it into fluorescent pink. It's a nice effect. This is the big panel. 10 by 10 centimeters. What? It's just broken camera. It was working. Yeah, bad connection here. That's Chinese. Oh, I can smell something. It's burning inside. Yeah, when I bend it, you can see it operating, but for a while. And I have already cut the original plug on it because I was interested what happens when I plug it directly into mains. And this is actually a really bad idea, but I just couldn't resist the temptation to try this. And definitely don't try this at home. Yeah, it works. But never try this at home, this is really dangerous. And the power is... For t times 10 range, it's 80 milliwatts, 0 0.08 watts. It's quite a low power. I don't dare to use this one because... Or actually, let's try this. Let's see what happens. Maybe a loud bang. It works on mains voltage. And strangely it's green, not... Yeah, it's burning. I better turn it off. But strangely on mains voltage it's more green and on the inverter it's more blue. That's strange. And it has burned a little bit here. Yeah, that's crazy. And don't try this at home. Okay, so let's open it up. I will start with this panel. There's a heat shrink tube. And inside the tube there's just a tie with some connections going to each side. One side is some conductive layer and the other side is probably some conductive transparent layer. And in between of the layers there's some phosphorescent compound. It's flexible. You can bend it. Let's see if we can repair it. Okay, I will cut the broken connection and see whether it is solderable or not. It seems to delaminate now. Okay, this isn't going well. I think this is properly destroyed now. Okay, let's just poke it with wires. Yeah, it works for a while. No, it seems to work. Okay, it seems that the top layer on it is conductive. It's a transparent layer. And it appears to be conductive. Nine kilo ohms. 
One two kilo ohms. Wow, that's quite conductive for a transparent layer. Okay, now it works for another short while. And it's touch sensitive now. It's like a touch screen. And now it dried. This seems to be a layer of phosphorescent material and from one side there is a transparent conductive layer and from the other side there is a metal layer. The color is a little bit like a copper. The strip is very similar construction and I'm not going to disassemble it because I'm happy it works. And the wire is a little bit different construction and I'm going to draw a picture of it. And the construction of the electroluminescent wire. There's a wire inside in the core. This is the luminescent or fluorescent material. There are another wires twisted around. There are two but they are both connected. This is the transparent sleeve and this is the red sleeve. Okay, so let's see what is the voltage and frequency. And the voltage is 103 volts. Oh, over 100, that's quite a lot actually. And the frequency... The frequency is 1.86 kilohertz. And I think you can even hear the frequency. Okay, what power does it draw? The voltage of the battery under load is 2.77 volts. And the current is... Let's see the current. Set it to amps. And I will try to open the connection and put the ampermeter into it. And it's going to be complicated. It draws 0.27 amps. Okay, and the power is 2.77 volts times 0.27 amps. And this is about 0.75 watts. Three quarters of a watt. That's quite a lot of power actually. So I think those batteries are going to last about 5 hours, maybe 10 hours, no more. And now let's take a look inside the driver. There's just one screw. And that's everything in it. This is just a battery holder. And this tiny PCB. This tiny circuit board. And there are the battery contacts, LED, the switch, the transformer, and here some assembly components. There is some chip, one transistor, second transistor, some resistors, some capacitors. Okay, so I will try to draw a schematic of it. And there's the battery, there is the capacitor across it, there's the push button connected to some chip under a black blob. This is a, it's a mystery chip, nobody knows what it is, but it doesn't matter. I think it is just to enable and disable the oscillator. It doesn't actually have any other function than just enable and disable the circuit. There's the LED. And there is the output of the chip, which enables and disables the oscillator. And the output is, it is active when it's low and it is off when it's high. So when, when, the, when the output goes low, the LED is lit and this oscillator circuit is enabled. This is basically a rare oscillator circuit which is built with PNP transistors, so it's like upside down, it's not with NPN, but with, with PNP and 
the emitters are connected to the positive, the collectors go to the transformer with double primary and the center tap is connected to the negative. So when the, when the output of the chip goes low, those transistors start to open and there is a feedback from the collector of one of them to the base of the other one and from its collector to the base of the first one. So when, when the chip goes low, the bases are low, the transistors start to open and then the oscillation sets in. When one transistor will open, there is a positive voltage on this side of the transformer. So this side will have a negative voltage. The negative voltage will go through this capacitor and resistor and keep the transistor opened until this capacitor will discharge and then the whole thing will swap. This, this transistor will be opened, this side will be positive, this one negative, the negative voltage goes to the base and opens it until the capacitor will discharge. The oscillations go on and the inductance of the transformer and the capacity of the electroluminescent wire will form a resonant circuit. So I have disassembled a second driver with a different version of a board, with a different layout, but the schematic is almost the same. Just the capacitor across the battery has been omitted. It doesn't seem to be in very high quality. The buttons have four pins, but only two of them are actually soldered. The top of the board is almost the same in both of them. And the funny part is that when I opened it, the battery contact just fell off. Because there is almost no solder on them.